Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. I'm sure you've said this before. Maybe you've heard this before. I, mean, I got to go with my gut. I got to go with my gut on that. Uh, or I've got, I've got feeling. I've got a gut feeling about that. What is that? That is your intuition. And that's this wonderful power you have to give you answers. And really, it's you telling you the right answer for many things. How do you harness the power of your in- intuition? We're going to talk with somebody today who literally wrote the book about that. She is a top-ranked keynote and two-times TEDx speaker, trainer, consulting, best-selling author. She's an authority on AI, not artificial intelligence, accelerated intervention. And I got a gut feeling this is going to be good. <laughs> Edie Rather joins us here on the program. How are you? I'm good, Stephen. I'm Glad to be here. Why not? Love, love your colors. Love the beret. Love the uh, <laughs> the, the green connection there. Uh, and you, the beret is your trademark. We know you for it's that. It's my trademark. It is. I have about a hundred every color. I <laughs> uh, love it. I love it. Tell me about intuition. What is it? You know, there's so many different definitions for it. One, you know, uh, we've all heard of Young Carl Young, and he said it's it's perception via the subconscious. I like that. It's it's that sense that we get. It's a starting point that can lead to ideas and imagination and images, but it's also um, noticing when things aren't rationally right. It notices that, you know, when we have a gut feeling we're being scammed. You know, you start reading things, and there's these red flags, and you don't even know what they are. But it's when there isn't that, you know, conventional pattern of things. But, you know, in my book, I also gave a bunch of different definitions for it. And, and you know, one of them is it's, it's um, cosmic fishing. Some people call it God's telephone. It's unconventional wisdom. You know, the subconscious is a million times in my TEDx talks, both of them, I talk a lot about the subconscious because... I do neuroplasticity, brain training, and so obviously for over 50 years, I have rewired people for health, happiness, and success. And if we don't, you know, have access to the subconscious mind, it's like having a gold mine in your backyard and you're you're starving. You know what I mean? Mm. And so intuition is that it is that cosmic connection. It's that telephone to a deeper level of of knowing and that's really it's it's logic on steroids it's it's that knowing without thinking does that make sense to you absolutely and once you harness the power of it and realize it and i personally believe the only way that you can is by not trusting it and then realizing what transpired well you know what i remember on nova like 40 years ago there was something and they um, they were having people do something and it was basically, you know, testing their gut level intuition and it was a hundred percent accurate, but then they threw in a wrench and they took away their, they took away their positive belief system and their trust and intuition. And guess what happened, Steve? Mm. They lost it. They lost it. So it seems like our positive belief system in it is what fuels the process and and actually makes it it work yeah and yeah it's it's interesting you know Cher was asked years ago Sonny and Cher mm-hmm. and she you know asked uh, what is your greatest blessing and she said the brain and then they said what is your greatest curse and she said the brain mm. and so and there's a difference between the mind and the brain but they they work with each other if they work against each other we have chaos. Tell me how you know your intuition is knocking at your door saying, well, well wait a minute, yeah, th- th- that's, that's not, this is the right answer right over here. What's the feeling you get? You know what, that's a very good question. And generally, you always hear about women's intuition. Are women more intuitive? Generally speaking, yes. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't want to hear <laughs> no, that. No, 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 no. I don't think there's any difference. I just what? think. I just, I know that men aren't in tune with it. They're not listening to hear the messages. Exactly. But if you don't listen to hear the message, it's like Lao said, to Lao Su said, 
to know and not to do is not oh, to know. For, for sure, but I just wanted to clarify, it's not no, women, have, women have more intuition than men. I don't believe that's true. Okay, I like what you said. They have more access. They pick up on it more. Awareness. They, yes, awareness. Okay. You're absolutely All right, we're back. right. We're back on the same page, and this podcast will now continue. Yeah, and, and that <laughs> is good. But um, wait, what was your question? So how do you, what is, what do you, Edie, what do you feel? Well, you know what? It's, it's actually a sensory perception thing. It, it's how we first, you know, pick up on things mm -hmm. and then respect it. But this is the interesting thing. Your intuition is never wrong. It is never, ever wrong. And people say, wait a minute, I had a gut feeling I should marry this guy. And he was an alcoholic and a drug addict. And it wasn't so good. Right. Okay. But what it is, is that you intuition is always there. And it's pure. And it's right. It's holistic. But it is your perception on how you read it. And that can be tainted with... Um, fearful thinking, worrying, negative thinking, yep. or it can be tainted with wishful thinking. Like if you really want something to work and you have this gut feeling, it's just going to be so good. It's because it's wishful thinking and not intuition. That is the most important thing I can share with you today mm. is to get that clarity. And, and if we're pure, it, it'll never lead you the wrong way. I'll give you an example. Absolutely. I'm looking out at the lake. I went from a mansion, that's what Home and Garden Channel called it. It sounds pretentious. It was a nice path. I went from that to homeless. I mean, no flushing toilets, no running water, nothing. For 15 months, I had a pail from the Dollar Tree. That was my commode, okay? So I had lost everything, but I didn't lose my creativity. And so that's when I started writing my seven books. So you got to grow where you're planning. But listen to this. The spot that I bought... Um, I just remember, I, I, you got to know, I'm the kind of person that if I'm buying oranges, you know, three bucks a bag or whatever, I got to lift five of them so I get that extra ounce. But I bought a property on the lake. It was over a half million for just dirt. And that was 20 years ago. Wow. I, I made the decision in 3.5 seconds. I had to have it. And I lived homeless for 15 months, but I was not going to let this go. So the bot, and then I think, how could I do that? I'm so pragmatic. I'm so, I mean, I want that last raspberry and I'm going to test five of them on the scale. People think I'm nuts for one more raspberry. But when I'm spending this much, but it's one of the best decisions I ever made. I just had a gut feeling. You knew. I wanted it. Close. You knew. I knew. And you know what else? I, she, he said, well, we can't do it. It's 10 o'clock at night. I said, you're going to wake her up. I want this closed by noon tomorrow. I want the contract closed. Honey. Steve, three people offered a hundred grand more for the property that next afternoon. How did I know this had to be solid in I, cement? I have I chills knew. hearing your story, and I'm I want to get closer in my intuition as we all do to that. But I I truly believe, and I want your your feedback on this, that anything you need to know, any answer you need to know. You know, always searching, go on the internet, find, 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 find. You already know the answer. That is absolutely right. And that's why I like I like that you corrected me on the intuition. I never thought of it that way. It's all it's that cosmic telephone kind of connection. Mm. It's all there. Life is a feast and most poor fools are starving. All of the opportunities are there. We have to recognize it. We have to access it. We have to connect with it. And that's where intuition comes in. It, yeah. it connects us it, to the subconscious, which, you know, again, it has, it's a million times more powerful. And that's yeah. where the information is. Yeah. And so why just, we're skimming the surface with, yeah, it's, it's logic on steroids. You know, another example is my dad. I don't know if my dad graduated from eighth grade or not, but, but he was claimed by everybody. I'm from Wisconsin, Algoma, a little fishing village that he was just this incredible genius. There were like five PhD engineers that could not figure out some of the stuff he did. Wow. And I swear, and that's why I wrote the book. It was dedicated, basically. You know, and I remember my dad, he was a big polka dancer. If you're from the Midwest, that's what you do. <laughs> but I remember he would scream at us, don't look at your feet. And I realized later, 
don't he didn't want us to analyze it. Don't get so logical. Don't yes. do the one, two, three. Do you know what I'm saying, Steve? I know what you're saying. And these, he said, yeah. And to this, I mean, I'm in my 80s and I run up and down steps. I never look at it. I cut my own hair and be in the dark. And people say, how can you do it? I just kind of feel my way through it. And that's when we connect with it. We can run down steps with a, when you look at the steps, that's when you stumble. When you get into the flow, we talk about, you know, athletes, Jordan, Tiger Woods in the flow. That applies to all of us when we connect to the source. Yep. And the source. Well, okay, let's go there. What do you, what is the source? Is that your intuition? Uh, I, it, no, the intuition is the connector. Oh, it's remember, okay. It's that connects you to, vision. so is the source, some can say that's the creator. Some yeah. can say, you know, the universe, but it's, it goes back Collective to consciousness, spirituality, something bigger spirituality, than you, whatever it is. Akashic it, records, Akashic records, sure. all that has ever sure. been. It hmm. could be the wisdom of the ancient Egyptians. Yeah. The, what, look what they built. They were so tuned in because they weren't distracted. Yeah, well. They weren't addicted yeah, to digital yeah, dopamine. Hun- Do you know what I mean? I know what you mean. And that's why many of us go wrong with our intuition. And then the logic comes in. And many times, the answer you're looking for is the easiest one. And you say, it can't be that easy. No. And then you overthink it and you make the wrong choice. Yeah, exactly. And that's one of the things. And actually, now you have to realize, too, it's I'm certified in Herman brain dominance, you know, right brain, left brain. And and actually, intuition tends to be associated with people who are more right brain. So it doesn't mean if you're left brain or that you can't develop it or connect with it. But let's face it, I would never be a good CPA. Can I get better at math? Probably. Is it is it my natural gift? No, I'm right there with you. Same exact thing. Numbers don't intrigue me more creative. You're the same way. Um, never say never. If, if you had to apply yourself, we could pull it off, but it's boring. You don't want to do it. Exactly. And you know, and that's why we need each other because the, the Herman brain dominance people actually, they um, did studies on all different organizations throughout the world. And you know what the best performing organizations had, they had an equal balance of all quadrants of the brain, the upper mm-hmm. right, the upper left, the upper lower left and lower right. Yeah. The whole bit they had it. So it's balanced. It's holistic. So we do need to each other, need each other. And that's where communication comes in. And unfortunately, so many people that are on this are not developing the communication skills. Well, yeah. you know, that we especially need. younger generation, not to sound old. I have a 16 year old daughter and I can see it, you know, when it comes to you know speaking with somebody going into a store, dealing with a you know situation, uh, Edie, can you think back to the times where you went against your intuition and the outcome? When I want to get it? Well, when, when you thought about th- those times where your gut feeling was, don't do this, that's a bad idea, and you went against it. Yes. Yeah, me too. Oh, my God, Steve. That, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So how did I lose four or five million? How did I go from a mansion to living outside, to being, yeah, in a boat, a 19-foot boat, no cover on it. Um, how did that happen? I know. I gave a guy, when I moved to North Carolina, um, he lied to me. I don't lie. See, we project our frame of reference on other people. If I'm honest, I expect you to be Steve, and that's why we're more trust. Do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> It's the trust thing. I gave him all my, I bought 35 lots, oceanfront lots. None of them had houses. There was no revenue, no income. And every month for, let me think, eight years, I think it was, I was losing 22000 a month. I saw, and I was a hardworking single parent. Just nobody gave it to me. And I saw it just dwindling down. That's hard. It's hard. But you know what? I know when I think back that I knew giving him all that money wasn't right because I had good financial advisors back in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I was hiding it from. So my gut knew that that was the wrong thing to do. Otherwise, why wouldn't I be open to the people that I'm paying to give me financial advice? Do you know what I'm saying? Have you done it? And I'll bet you those of you listening to this, can, whether it's a personal relationship, a romantic relationship, a work situation, a job. You know what I mean? Where there were signs. Oh, 
and you you violated your own soul. Yeah. Oh, what a great way to put it, Edie. You violated your own soul because you knew. I know. I was in a long term relationship. I didn't one hundred percent trust that person. There was a couple of reasons why, but they weren't important enough for me to say I'm not doing this. So I continued with it, and I would say I had a oh, call it a ten percent distrust. So 90% I trusted, but there's always that little there. Fast forward um, quite a few years. And then what I uncovered, and I just should have went with my gut. And even when I did uncover something very large back in the day, I continued another seven years. Um, I should have right there at that point. Yeah. Yes. And you know what, Steve, that goes back to what I said. If you take two things away, it's, it always is right but it's contaminated with wishful thinking or fearful thinking. Yeah. You know, if you think your kid's going to get in an accident, it's because you're a worrier. It's not real intuition. In this case for you, it was wishful thinking. Absolutely. You wanted to believe. Absolutely. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. And so then we get into, you know, a rational override of what our gut is screaming to us. And, you know, even in the Bible, and it doesn't matter. I don't care what re- every single religion in one way, talks about this it's the third eye that's what that's what intuition is but even in the bible i wrote that down someplace it was in luke where uh he refers to the third eye but you know here it is the third eye jesus luke 11 34 when thine eye is single so it's not these eyes it's not where we pick up sin okay yep with single eye the whole body is full of light, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And it says, you know, seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door will be open. But it also says, be still and know. So it's really important that we take time to be mindful, to meditate. And that's how we access the intuition. It's often screaming at us, but we're so dang busy with distractions or whatever that we're not listening to that gut guidance, that inner guide, that whether it's a job that we take, you know, on my speaking side, I've got my mantra is better thinking, better decisions, you know, better results, better performance, right? It's the decisions we make. We will make better decisions. But, you know, and some people, you know, and I, God bless, I'm not a left brainer myself, but I love the left brainers. They keep me on track at times if I listen to them. But you know what a left brainer will do typically, they'll do a thing and they'll draw a line down the middle and they'll put the pros and cons. That's not bad. But see, that's all going logical. That's pro, and it's good. We need both. It's a, a dynamic dance between the right and the left hemispheres here. Does that make sense? It, it does. Uh, and I, I'm, 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 it- I'm intrigued that you're saying that because I believe in intuition. I was in a situation, I don't even get into the details, but my intuition was telling me for the longest time really where it was going and the outcome. In the end, I did exactly what you said because I wanted to prove to myself that this wasn't a good situation. So I drew the line and I call it the scale of life and, you know, kind of Ah. weighed out and the pros and the cons. and, And I saw that the, there weren't a lot of pros. It was like double, if not more, cons in the situation. It was a relationship. And I was like, yeah, you know what? There it is, staring me in the face. I didn't want to believe it. And of course, my intuition along the way, and this is a different situation than I said before, um, along the way, I just knew the outcome. I just knew where we're going with that. Um, <laughs> it's, and it's- you know what, Steve? And that's why I said it's a dynamic duo dance that we have between the right and left. Sure. I get feeling that you and I are both right brain people, or at least lean that way. The creative, the the ideas. I yeah. agree. And so we do need to do some of those type exercises. We do need to do it. But if you're a left brain person, you sometimes get stuck in that, and that will block a higher level of knowing, a deeper level of thinking. Do you know what I mean? Yes. You know, it's interesting before you did say when it comes to intuition, it's, can you run that back? It's the um, wishful thinking. It's the fearful thinking, fearful thinking. That's the two. And and I'm going to add a third one. It's the tester because I will engage in a situation that I know the answer there's no harm done. Maybe it's a you know a little bit of time, hour or whatever. I'll get engaged in it just to prove that my intuition was right. And we're almost out of time, but I want to ask you this question. In doing so, 
I wonder if I'm manifesting the outcome and it's not really my intuition. I know I might be overthinking it. Does that make sense? Where you Wait, why wouldn't it be intuition? What do you think it is? Okay, here's a situation. You know what the outcome is going to be. You're, you're Clearly, you're hearing it and you're listening to it, but you're going to test it. You're going to go through with it anyway, just to, just to see that you were right. You, you were right. Then I wonder, did I manifest the outcome or was that truly my intuition? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what? And it's a two-way street. It's the chicken or the egg. It's like what what comes first, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think, yeah, it's that, there again, it's that dance. It's that interplay that we're yeah. always talking about. Um, but I, there's, there's a quote in my book. Your most brilliant ideas, listen to this, come in a flash, but the flash comes only after a lot of hard work. See, that's that dynamic dance again. Mm. It's okay. Nobody gets a big idea when he or she is not relaxed. And nobody gets a big idea when he is relaxed all the time. So yeah. sometimes we have to throw it out to the universe, but then we have to withdraw and the butterfly comes and sits on our shoulder. Does that make sense? And there's another, so my, yeah. And, and, you know, the book is also about, um, you know, being in alignment with our soul's code and our calling in life. That's why I call it why cats don't bark. Cats don't bark because that's not their calling in life. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you do. But George Bernard Shaw said, this is the true joy in life. Um, the being used for a purpose. It's finding your purpose and mission in life. Recognized by yourself as a mighty one. It's being one with it. It's Winton Marsalis being one with his trumpet. The being thoroughly worn out before you are thrown on the scrap heap when we die. So I, I believe a, and we're out of time here, Edie, but next yeah. time we get together, why don't we talk about discovering your life purpose? Uh, what do you think? I would love it. Can I give, if somebody wants to contact me, I do do coaching. I Please. Do know, <laughs> Please. Yeah, the neuroplasticity. Oh, and I didn't talk about my children's character building program. I have a program, Steve, that wires kids. When you climb the ladder of success, for heaven's sake, take your kids with you. I have a program for three to nine because that's when we reveal our calling in life, three to nine. I have a program for those kids that don't spontaneously have the blast. Oprah Winfrey did. All the Olympians do, Einstein, they know their calling. And so I have a program that programs every child with it, neurologically wires them for health, happiness, and success. Great with the holidays, Christmas coming, I'm telling you. But yeah, you can call me at 704-658-8997, or my email is just my name, Edie at Rather, R-A-E-T-H-E-R, Dot com. My speaking site. Also, if you guys are having a conference, I'm the spark to the start. If you're having a conference. <laughs> EdieRather.com is the best website. The kids program, WingsForWishes.com. And the coaching is Wong, Lake Norman, Hypnotherapy, and CoachingCenter.com. Uh, Give me a call. We'll yeah, work it out. Love it. Rather, by uh, the way, R-A-E-T-H-E-R. E and and e Edie is just E-D-I-E, -E, not two Ds. That's Eddie. Gotcha. <laughs> it has been wonderful, refreshing, insightful, amazing speaking with you. Uh, I can't, I don't want to say I can't wait because that's not proper phraseology. I'm looking forward to meeting with you again and uh, going deep. Uh, you make it fun. You make all of this fun. Well, and, and that's what I do. I take people on a deeper dive into the neurochemistry of success. Yeah. In fact, I'm doing a 12-week master class, if you're on a job, on the neuro marketing. It's on neuro marketing for sales success. So I work with yeah, corporations and small businesses and entrepreneurs as well. Yeah. I'm here to help. I'm here to help. Love it. Thank you so much. And uh, looking forward, next time we get together. Take care. Bye for now. And trust your gut. <laughs> <laughs> Mine speaks loudly. <laughs> I'm so jealous. All right, we'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Adopt US Kids presents Multiple Choice Parenting. Your daughter just had her first breakup. Do you A, put yourself in her shoes? How could he do this to you? 
And for Sheila, she, she has split ends. B, console her. Oh, sweetie, this is going to happen a lot. Four, maybe five more times before you get married. C, take charge. Got to get this all straightened out. Keep a little talking to, man to man, mano a mano. Hey, Steve. It's now a good time? No? Okay, no problem. Bye. Or D, help her find a new boyfriend. I know a great place to meet boys. The internet. Nice, single boys. Never mind. How about some ice cream? As a parent, there are no perfect answers. But you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. For more information on how you can adopt, visit AdoptUSKids.org. A public service announcement from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt U.S. Kids, and the Ad Council.